Today I'll be showing the fast and inexpensive iterative process I used for designing this custom 911 GT3 cup steering wheel. Rapid prototyping with a 3D printer can be extremely useful and inexpensive, and this is usually the way I'll start prototyping a first wheel. I was able to go through three different design iterations in only two days while only spending about $10 on plastic. So you can see the value that this really brings, especially for small shops like mine. And at the end, we'll have the final design ready where I can do the assembly of the wheel with the more expensive materials while remaining confident that everything will fit. So here I'm just 3D printing the first version. Uh, this was the version that I had made in the previous video in part one. And really what I was wanting to do is, um, it, it's good to like have the design, it's good to finish the first design and then not, o not overthink it because it's always going to change and so that that's the beauty about this process is i can put the design together and then i can just quick 3d print it for a few dollars and then i can just put it together and you can see at first here i was gonna actually mount uh, the shifters to the front plate with screws but then it actually didn't fit with the hub because the 3d model of the shifters i had was different than the shifters i'm using for this wheel and so i decided just to go the faster route because all all that my goal was for this is to print the parts and then uh, do a fit check to see what needed to be changed and so i just used some double-sided tape and i started um, double-sided taping everything together So I knew right away that the bolt pattern for the shifters was wrong and uh, and then as well as the bolt pattern for the shifter paddle because uh, there wasn't enough space. So I kind of just took a caliper, figured out how much I needed to uh, move out that shifter paddle, the, uh, the spacing on that shifter paddle, and then just write it down on a notepad. And so what I'm doing then is I'm just um, figuring out what I need to move and how much and then I can go back in the second version and, and change that. And while I stepped away here, all I did was I just went to a sander and I um, just sanded down that shifter paddle just to get it on there again. And that's the, the other nice thing is, you know, that paddle is probably 20 to 30 cents. And so the, uh, the cost is so cheap. I mean, it's throwaway. So I just sanded it down and then bolted it on. This steering wheel that I'm using, this is the original Porsche uh, 911 GT3 Cup steering wheel and it is definitely not cheap. It's $505 US. I purchased it from Germany and it shipped over. And so uh, this is the, the customer, they wanted to have a exact replica and uh, but also have the um, LCD uh, display attached to the wheel. And so, um, like I had mentioned in the previous video, I wanted to just get the hub together and uh, figure out, you know, how, how that fit. And then I can figure out how I want to mount that display. And you can see here, the shifter paddles were um, too far inward towards the center. So I, I shouldn't have been wearing a hat. But uh, what I was measuring was uh, how far I want to move it out towards the outer edges so that your uh, my fingers could more easily reach it and then I took the buttons these are these buttons are just ones that I had lying around they're the APEM IPR 3 SAD buttons these are what I will be using it's the same button that I'll be using for the final build but the um, ones I'll be using for the final build are colored ones so now I'm just trying to figure out how I want to mount this and you know that's the beauty you can just take a caliper and it's something that I I could have probably sat and thought about it for hours uh, while designing it in CAD in the first version, but I just figured it's so much easier to have it right in front of me and then I can uh, figure out what the best way to do it and then I can just draw a sketch 
and I'll go ahead and make those changes uh, in the second version. So then what I did was I went back into CAD and I started making the changes. And then next what I did was I was changing that uh, bolt pattern on the shifter paddles as well to fit on the shifters. And then what I started to do was finish the sketch of the hub, which will include the brackets for the display. After doing a rough sketch of the hub and how I was going to design that, I just did a little square uh, bracket that would mount the hub to the display, and I would machine that out of carbon fiber. After I had the rough design of the hub, I just started putting the fillets in there to make it look more professional. I was thinking about having a channel inside of this hub here, and what I would do then is have a zip tie that would actually go through the channel and it would hold on and sort of be sort of a cord grip for the wires. Uh, for the buttons but then I actually went away with that because the, it, this has worked before with FDM 3D printing but since I'm going to be doing SLS um, they were concerned about not having not letting that sand that they use during that process escape and it might not work so I just decided against it and then I was just able to quickly extrude out those little uh, brackets for the display and this display here it is not the one I'll be using it was just one I had on hand and uh, so it really isn't representative of the actual one but I just wanted to get an idea of what it would look like with it and then I can after that I can extrude out that uh, rear carbon fiber plate after I thought that looked good I exported everything out as a STL file and then what I do is I will then import it into the slicer software for 3D printing it. Once I import the components into the slicer software, I already have all of the settings preset, so I have a really low infill because again, these parts are just to fit check everything. And even though some of these operations can take, you know, anywhere from three to seven hours, I think they were, I can um, just set it and forget it basically. And so, and so 3D printing the front plate shifters in the hub, it may have taken all day, but the amount of time it took me personally was like a matter of 10 minutes to just get everything set up. After everything came out of the printer, I just went back and did the exact same process. I used uh, double-sided tape and I just wanted to get a fit check again and see how uh, the changes were. So the changes for the shifters were good the, and the shifter paddles were good as well. Then I put the steering wheel on to see how the uh, bracket for the hub would work. Since I'm going to be custom wiring the uh, display and everything is going to be going through Deutsch uh, Motorsport connectors and a 12 pin coiled cable. I just snipped off the USB uh, connectors on the display and then uh, put it all inside the hub to kind of get an idea of how the wiring would be 
as well as the brackets. After a little contemplation, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to change out that rear plate as well as the bracket for the uh, display. So then I went back to CAD for the third and final version and I made the proper adjustments again to the shifter paddles so that they would be a little bit wider which would bring out that shifter paddle, I think it was another five millimeters or so. And the other reason I made the shifter paddle wider rather than the bolt pattern on the front plate for the shifter base was that when I would uh, pull on the paddle, my finger would be on top of the M3 screw, which was kind of annoying. And then I went ahead and changed the mounting holes on that hub. And then I thought that the face plate that that display sits on it didn't need to be so thick, and so I extruded that back to be the width of the display itself, so it just had a bit of a cleaner look. I would got the cable gland in that I was going to use for the coiled cable, and it was actually too small, so I had to make that hole um, quite a bit bigger in order to fit the larger cable gland that I was going to use. And then I didn't like the look of having those um, carbon fiber brackets along with the rear plate so I just made it all one piece and then I really like that it had a much cleaner look and after I thought that was good to go I just went and repeated the process again to see how the final fit check would be one of the nice things about using the Slicer software is I can do a layer by layer analysis of what, um, how that's gonna print. And I was worried about maybe that bridge might um, print weird and it, it might uh, cause a failure in the print. But I kind of decided, well, it really didn't matter because again, this is just a, a, a throwaway piece. So once I got those third version uh, parts printed, I went ahead and did the final fit checks. So after putting it all together and having everything look good, what I'll be doing in the next step is ordering all the materials like the carbon fiber, the hub, and then all the electronics and the harnessing materials, which I'll be doing in part three. And it'll be fun to show the process of doing the uh, wiring and the harnessing because I'm not going to be doing this as a typical sort of sim raising spec because there's kind of levels to it. And what I'm going to be doing is actually for this wheel is it's going to be uh, wired as a motorsport race spec. And uh, that really adds uh, to the cost a lot and it'll be fun to show that process as well as the reason why race spec stuff is so expensive. If you made it this far I really appreciate you watching the video and supporting the channel by liking and subscribing. In this video alone I had about 20 hours of uh, footage to cut down into bite-sized chunks that can be watched and hopefully it helps some of you in your processes and uh, I look forward to part three where we can finish the build.